moderator of tonight's uh, Q&A, Mr. Trip Hope. He's going to introduce you. Thank you so much, Joe. Wow, weren't those amazing action sequences? <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Uh, so my name is Trip Hope. Uh, I'm one of the executive producers of the fourth episode. Uh, I just believe in Eric so much. I think this is a phenomenal series. So first of all, uh, let's have Eric come on up. He's the writer, director, producer, and editor. He does it all. Uh, let's have uh, Kevin McCorkle come on up here. Uh, let's have Ivana, Ivana Sheen, come on up. Yes, Amanda Weiss, come on up, please. Excellent. And Terry Callender, come on up. Jessica. Oh, yes, and Jessica Tomei, please, come on down. This really has become like a family up here. Yeah. So uh, I'm just going to ask you about five different questions uh, to Eric and to the cast, and then we're going to open it up to the audience if any of you have any questions. So to start with, Eric, uh, we'd just like to know, how did the division begin? I mean, some of you probably heard this, you know, uh, but the division began as a, you know, my way of making a feature film. Like I said in the beginning, um, I wanted to um, make a feature film, but you know, obviously there's no money. So, uh, but I have a little money for a short film. So, I. Uh, but what if I make a series of short films with a single storyline? Then I can combine them all together later, and that's basically the, the beginning, uh, the beginning of it, and. Um, um, but obviously, you know, kind of, you know, I just, I guess, unconsciously designed it as a, you know, uh, episodic series. And uh, actually, when I thought about the idea, I said, okay, I'm gonna only release this on online, and then I'm gonna call it a web series. And I basically created my own genre, and then I searched for a web series, and there's like millions of other web series out there. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the beginning of the division. And, uh, yeah. Great, thanks Eric. And I'd like to go down uh, the entire row for the actors, and if you could just uh, briefly explain, how did you originally come on board with the division? How did you get involved? So, I, I'm Ivana, and I play Michelle Trevor, and I got involved because I had worked with Eric on a previous film, Good, Good and Evil. Yes. Yeah, mm. and, and I had also worked with Thomas on it, you know, the badass in this. <laughs> We had worked together and there was like a lot of guns and warehouses and I was like, I love working with this guy. And then I was super excited when he called me for the division. You actually thought, um, you actually thought it was like a small role? Yeah. You were already mad in the episode. Yeah, because <laughs> the first then, one I died. Then, you go, oh, you're coming back for episode two. Like, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm Kevin McCorkle and I play uh, Senator Stanfield. Um, I, I actually came to the division through Andrew Bowen. I, I don't, do you know where he is? He's actually shooting. Shooting, yeah, he's always working, so. Um, and uh, Eric and I had lunch, and we you know, talked about the project a little bit, and uh, got to know each other at the lunch, and it just sort of evolved from there. And uh, I, I think it's amazing as a web series, you know, more, more and more. It's, it's funny that you hadn't discovered that. You know, but more and more web series are, you know, having great success on the, on the web. So uh, I, I think it's great the way that it is, and I hope we do 40 more episodes. <laughs> My name's Amanda Wiss, and I play Helen Stanfield, Kevin's wife, the hopefully future first lady. <laughs> uh, we're planning on it. Um, I had seen on Facebook or something that Kevin was doing this web series, and I was so intrigued by it, and then you set up a meeting, like, out of the blue. Like, it was amazing. And Eric was so actually called me because he knew that we were friends. Is so that? Okay, I wasn't sure well, that. actually, you left a comment on the video. Yes. And then I saw you, and, wait a minute, she looks like someone, um, I was actually looking for a, um, Kevin's wife for this episode four. I was writing episode four when I, when I shot episode one, um, and, and, and she looks like, 
Kevin's wife. You know? <laughs> so I went in there, and then, obviously, you know, actress, sag after all, you know. <laughs> I got to look her up. So I basically had your, you know, resume for like three years. Oh, <laughs> Well. So for those of you actors who don't think that it works, you know, having all your information on Facebook and the websites and all that stuff, it does. It really does. And I think that's a, a great thing that's going on now. So sorry to interrupt. No, no, that's okay. And the other cool thing is that I've known Kevin for, well. I know that years. Yes. <laughs> since, since we were young, very young, last year. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I had the most fun working on this, and I too hope this goes many, many episodes, and it, I think it's wonderful as a web series, and if you do create it into a film, that's, all, that's amazing. And I personally, um, just watching it tonight, I, I'm so amazed at the quality, the, the actual quality of how it looks. And the, it's, just, it's so beautifully done. And, and wow, you know, I've done many films that don't have that quality. So it's just really, I, I'm very excited to be a part of this. Thank you. Here you go. Oh. <laughs> See, we're already arguing like a husband. <laughs> I'm Tara Callender and I play Jeremy Trevor and I started in the, um, in the division um, by, I think we just had like a meeting at Starbucks and he asked me <laughs> if, if, he want, if I wanted to do it and it sounded pretty cool so I just said yes and so, and, um, um, until now it was very fun filming it and I liked all the sets that we have done and all the props and I just think it was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Jessica Tomey, and I play Agent Chloe. Um, and actually, <laughs> Eric uh, found me on my Facebook. I think it was or online or my I, I I don't know. I, I cannot remember. But he sent me a message, and I thought it was something fake. And sometimes we get that. <laughs> but then yeah, you got to be careful. Actually, I know. It was actually Ellie Cassie. I, don't, I didn't come in. It was just yeah. like, let's do this. And yeah. I, it was a blessing, but Basically, I... Basically, I saw your reel. Oh, and that's then, right. You know, and yeah. you had the perfect look that I was looking for. And She's then I saw this amazing <laughs> reel that you did on the, uh, the show Forgotten. Oh, the Forgotten. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. With a like, yeah. thick like Spanish accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was looking for someone without the accent, but then, you know, she was just so perfect in it. Yeah. So I'm, Which I was really assumed. weird, because it is a very thick accent. Yeah. Um, on, on the forgotten and I'm so happy that he thought she could get rid of it because I, I, I can be like very Rosie Perez <laughs> I'm Puerto Rican but I was lucky. I just he took a chance you, you know. <laughs> thank goodness she's amazing <laughs> Uh, I am curious, what's the most memorable moment uh, from working on the web series? And, and if there's not one that just, you know, you feel like it's the ultimate, just a memorable moment that came up on set or just working on it? Uh, there are a couple. Um, the first episode, um, there's at the end when, you know, when the, the band pulls up and then, you know, everyone comes out with the guns and you notice the jump cuts. There's actually a reason for that. Uh, I didn't plan it that way. There's actually a whole fighting sequence that we rehearsed, you know, for an entire day. And uh, actually from the van, Secretary, uh, Secretary Miller comes out and he asks for, do you work for the division? So the, uh, the, the script was a little different, but then the reason why it was this way is that I had to change the script on the spot because that was actually the parking lot of my apartment back then, and we got kicked out halfway through. So, you know, basically, you know, I'm going my way to the office and talking. And then, okay, we're leaving now, and as I going back to the uh, the set, you know, I just okay, how do I do this? You know, just I figured it out in the elevator, and then we just shot it. Okay, let's just wrap it up. You know, you guys wrap it up. We shoot here. You know, so that's I that's. I remember that most, and uh, at the fourth one, you know, uh, the uh, Film LA, there's no one working at Film LA here, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Film LA was the most, you know, uh, un unpleasant experience, but, you know, it's, they, they just do what they do, I do what I do, and uh, 
you know, th that whole thing just very took me out as, you know, uh, uh, directing this movie. And, um, but I just remember that very clearly that it was very painful, but um, <laughs> yeah, those are the two memorable moments. <laughs> Well, I was really, I really, the episode four, so the one we just watched, it was, that was just such a special episode for me. First of all, I was jogging one day and I was thinking about Eric and what an awesome director he is. I'm not kidding. And I ran into Eric. He was location scouting and we were, the house that gets blown up was like a few blocks from where, where we live. And so already there was this sort of special feeling and I guess you know, when you're an actor, you do so many different jobs and you don't know what's going to gel. But we were coming together on episode four and it was really starting to feel like this family, you know, like this feeling. And, and we were all so praying for Kevin and, you know, just so it was just a really for me, it was such a special experience, you know, and just really having known Eric for so long and believing in him, like watching him do his thing in the frame and you're going to go over here, this is going to blow up over there, like it makes me really happy, you know, just to see him. So that was a really, that last episode for me was very memorable. Well, I have uh, a couple of memories. The, the, the first episode being dragged around that parking lot by Andrew Vaughn. <laughs> it's like I, I felt guilty, you know, I'm passed out, I'm asleep, and he's like dragging me upstairs, dragging me across a parking lot. I just felt sorry for the poor guy. He's good and strong and he could take it, but uh, I, I felt like I wasn't carrying my weight literally that day. <laughs> um, and then, I, yeah, I think the, the fourth episode for me, um, June of last year, I was diagnosed with uh, acute leukemia, uh, and it was a pretty bad strain of leukemia. It was, had a FLT3 mutation, so without getting into all the details, it's, uh, it's a tough one. It's a scary one, and it's one that can figure out chemotherapy, and it can work around, and it can get you. So, um, you know, I wasn't sure if I was going to be here a year later, and uh, God bless Eric for, uh, they started shooting this episode, when did you start? Like last year? June, last year. June, June of last year. And I was diagnosed on June 13th of last year. Um, and he waited all this time for me to get through all I had to get through and grow my hair back. It's back better now than it was even in the episode. <laughs> we were trying to like figure out how to light my hair so it looked like I had a full head of hair because uh, you know there's, you can't get this with a wig. Um, so you know just to be back on the set and and to be working and to be you know every day is a blessing. Every day is a blessing and to you know be able to share this experience and do what I love doing was uh, no, no less than a miracle. And uh, I, my perspective has shifted a lot, you know, in the last year about the value of things and the importance of things. And uh, the, the small things mean a lot more to me now. And the big things, eh, they aren't that big, you know. The things that to overcome aren't that big. And uh, I, I just really appreciate Eric's faith in me and, and waiting for me to uh, get back to a place where I could shoot again. So thank you, Eric. Well, I'm only in episode four, so obviously that's the one I like the best. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, all the episodes are so good. In fact, when, when Eric had first talked to me about it, I got to go meet him, and I was so... Just... He... His enthusiasm completely inspired me, and I was so enthusiastic about it. And um, twofold. One, Helen Stanfield, you've written such a great character. She's just... She's just so unpredictable and, and, and tough and in just running everyone. And it just down the road is going to be so much fun. And so a couple things. Eric was so much fun to be directed by. He's just great and he instills a lot of trust and faith. And secondly, getting to work uh, opposite a, a dear old friend who had been through such a struggle that, you know, was affecting us all. So to get to do that was so much fun because 
We've known each other. We used to be in a Shakespearean play reading group in the 80s. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we, we, we got to take that and bring that in. And then I got to work with Jessica, who is just phenomenal, fantastic. And so the actors that I got to work with that day, obviously she, you weren't there. And so I didn't get to meet the rest of the cast, but it was so the whole experience was memorable, I guess, because it was just it was a fun way to be introduced as a character to walk in and get to smack someone yeah i kind of i was like that is such a great introduction like there's nowhere to go but up from here so i just think it's amazing so that would be it okay i have one question what does memorable mean memorable Men memorable mean you remember it it's something that you oh hold okay. in your memory and you enjoy it okay Pro probably um in episode three, when she kidnaps me, I think I think that's um, the most memorable thing I remember because it's like a little twist because you wouldn't think that she would kidnap me. So. <laughs> memorable or it was painful but <laughs> uh, was the scene where Andrew and I are in the we're in this sort of like closet space it was so hot on that rooftop that oh, day yeah, yeah. you remember yeah, yeah, yeah. and sweat was running in places that it shouldn't be running <laughs> and, and Eric kept going and um, and I feel like I have like that Elvis like it's because I'm so uncomfortable the whole entire time. <laughs> I just want to find Jeremy. Yeah. Like I was so done. <laughs> I remember your frustration that day. Oh, yeah. you know? <laughs> so I would say that was one of the most memorable. But when you see it, you're so happy you did it. So I, I love things like that anyway. So. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask uh, as, as a writer, director, producer. As an actor, actress, uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys are filmmakers yourselves in your own right. Uh, I was just wondering, do you have any advice for aspiring filmmakers? Uh, because I know that this is a film school. I'm not sure how many students are actually out here, but uh, just any advice. And not everybody has to answer it, but if you do, that'd be great. <clears throat> um, I've seen, after... Um, graduating film school, I've seen many, I've met and seen many filmmakers and they call themselves filmmakers. For me, if you do not, if you don't have a movie, if you, if you um, don't finish a movie and show it to an audience, then you're not a filmmaker. I think that's the most important thing. Um, oh yeah, it's not ready yet or you know, I'm not, you know, I don't have this yet, I don't have that yet. It doesn't really matter. You do what you have to do with what you have uh, at the moment. You know, it's not like um, you know. I would prefer to wait till I can hire the pyrotechnics so I can actually you know blow up the house. <laughs> but, you know, you do what you have to do. You know, and that reflects you um, at that moment. You know, yourself as an artist. So, uh, as a filmmaker, you should write, and if you direct it, you should edit it, and then you should finish it and then release it. Anywhere, you know, like just don't make a movie and don't show it to anyone else. It's just for me. Then might as well just go fine art, it, you know what I mean? Um, that is my advice. I mean, I'm interested. Are there any writers in the room? Film writers? Nice oh, yeah. couple. One thing that I look for when I'm reading scripts is you know, are you describing behavior in the stage directions or are you describing emotion? It's like such a technical thing, but as an actress, I love reading things like her arms are crossed more than she feels defensive. That That's something that's like very technical, I know, and weird, but it's just something that always separates certain scripts out from other scripts because I feel like that writer understands more of the, what the actor is doing in there. So. Yeah, I agree, let the actor determine the character and create the emotion and uh yeah i think that's that was good good advice Yay! there he is andrew bowen everybody andrew bowen's in the house so i'm i'm actually going to give the mic up to andrew and let him tell all right hey buddy hello hi how are you nice to meet you um i'm i'm so glad that we're in a school right now that, that we're presenting this in, in a school. 
I think that uh, no, no matter how much experience you have, no matter how um, many hours you put into your education, you never stop learning. You never, ever, ever stop learning. And whether it's going to a formal school like this, which I think is a great idea, uh, or continuing your education by having experience on the set, it's, it's necessary to continue growing and continue. Uh, I, I just read a, 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 I'll give you a brief story that I just read about on the web. Uh, Jody Foster, uh, when she was in um, Taxi Driver, was, uh, and who's, who's the, I always get Al Pacino and, uh, and, and Robert De Niro mixed up, so pardon me. Well, Robert De Niro was, would take her out, you know, and talk to her in coffee shops, and, and, you know, she was just kind of bored with Robert De Niro because she knew all her lines. She knew what she was going to do. She, she had it down. And she had no concept of building a character. And after like the fifth time they had sitting in a coffee shop and him playing around and changing things and moving things around and creating this character, she realized that he was the pro and she was, you know, kind of being a, being a little bit uh, cocky, you know. So I, I think that education is really, really important. And you learn from your peers. You learn from the people that you work with as much as learning in, in a school. Um, and I, I would say have a plan. You know, if you don't have a plan, then, yeah, there are a lot of actors out there, too, that are attending bar and really hip bar attending places and <laughs> making a lot of money doing that, but they're not being actors. They're not being actors. So make a plan and put your plan to work and act, act, act. You know, musicians uh, get together and they jam. Uh, dancers get together and work on routines. Actors get together and complain about the lack of work and how crappy their agent is, <laughs> you know? So, and there's no excuse not to now. I mean, you can pop out your iPhone right now and start your little documentary right this second, you know? So uh, I agree what, with what Eric says too about, you know, do something every day. Read Malcolm Gladwell's The Outliers. 10,000 hours is what it takes to master something. So start your 10,000 hours right now. I think it's all been said. I'll pass it to Jessica. <laughs> OK, great. Well, since Andrew just joined us, uh, I would like to ask Andrew uh, what his most memorable moment, or if he can think of a, a memorable moment on uh, filming the web series, something that really sticks out. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> kind of wish I could have Is this on? Can you hear me? Oh, it is. Sounds like you can't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. um, I always do that when I have a microphone in my hand. I don't know why. It's so uncool. <laughs> um, uh, most memorable... Oh, gosh. I was supposed to prep an answer for this, and now I'm just racking my brain. Um, honestly, I would say the most memorable moment... It was when we were shooting the first episode, and uh, Eric and we would choreographed this really great fight sequence. I told him about it. Oh, you did? <laughs> <laughs> but, that was my favorite. but the great moment about it was that it was, it was a really wonderful sign of a great director, because great direct filmmaking is problem solving. That's all it is. I mean, it is, you bring your craft, you bring all your work, you bring all your stuff, but it's ultimately problem solving, solving from the morning to the end of the day, from, you know, hitting your schedule, make sure you're in at lunch, you know, oh, uh, you know, the, the track's off, um, we lose a location, blah, 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 blah. And the great directors know how to just navigate it and be able to be hit with that pressure and function and, and, and spin on a dime and find a way to finish because you have to finish. And, uh, you know, we were like, okay, we didn't have the location. And Eric just cut it in his head. He was like, okay, let's just do this. And he worked quick and he figured it out and he shot it and it worked. And the great directors do that. And so for me, you know, that was the best moment because I went, there you go. Because, you know, it's, it's where you're hit the hardest, where that your true colors arise. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's quitting is easy. It's the easiest thing in the world you can do. There it is. You want to know what the easiest thing in the world is to do is quitting. And so even in the face of, 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 you know, tremendous odds and things are not going in your favor, if you just buckle down and you keep going, you'll get through it, you know? And, uh, and he did, and it turned out to be, to be good. I mean, other than that, it was just, you know, good times, good people and, you know, just working and 
long, being tired, um, and waiting time because this is a perfectionist to finish to finish things. But what else? Sure. Oh, uh, hey, that was advice, it. That was it. Advice so, to give to, advice to give to what? Aspiring filmmakers, actors. Uh, I, 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 yeah, McCorkle kind of, that was it. Good, yeah, just do, 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 do. And don't worry about getting it wrong. Because the great thing about getting things wrong is you learn. It's the best thing about mistakes. When you make a mistake, well, if you make a mistake like three times, someone, you should punch you in the face. That's just, <laughs> they should do that. Uh, but, you know, when you make mistakes, you make mistakes and learn from them. Um, so... Yeah, um, that's the best advice I can say. Just do, 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 and don't be afraid. Because you know, even when you make a mistake, you'll also get it right. And when it gets, when you get it right, it feels really, really good, and it's worth it. So, and it's worth your time and effort. And just you know, yeah, live your life, and don't don't live your life also just for your career, or just for your passion, or for your love. Live your life because it'll make your work better. You know, don't be afraid of. Uh, going on a vacation or getting married or doing any of this kind of stuff because having you want to be prepped for it or having a baby Don't wait do it because that's life and all that's gonna do is it's gonna energize your work and make things better You know, so don't be afraid of, of doing things in your life Don't wait for that moment to happen because your life is all the stuff that happens in between and You know sort of reaching because we think about this pinnacle and you can talk to anybody out there who's a gigantic success and it's the stuff that along the way, that was really what was worthwhile, you know? Because once you get there, it's a whole different set of stuff, you know? You know, you talk to any major star, and it's, it's, it's yeah, you've reached a pinnacle, and you're working and stuff, but then there's all sorts of other, you know, stuff that you have to adjust to with life. Don't get me wrong. You can buy an island, but, um, yeah, that's, that's, I'm rambling now. No, that's fine. Was... Let's sing a song. <laughs> So uh, I'm just going to do one more question, and then I'll open it up to the audience. Um, if anybody would like to share your dream role or your dream project, I think that might be interesting if you have, like, some role that you just really, really wish you could play or want to play. Uh, I want to be in a... I want to swing a sword or a battle axe and I'm like a, a medieval or or you know fantasy that's what I want that's that's my goal that's on my bucket list yeah. it's so funny you say that because I, my dream project is <laughs> um, I have a dream project I, I even have a script ready it's 200 pages but it's based on the Japanese manga. I'm not gonna say a name because I'm gonna oh. buy the rights. Uh, and I don't want any of you to buy the rights, but it's actually a medieval theme, you know? <laughs> medieval fantasy. So that's you heard so this, awesome. right? Okay. He's just <laughs> said I'm gonna publicly yeah. that I've got a role in this. <laughs> so, uh, you all were witness. But yes, that's my dream project. And um, uh, when I was at film school, my actual dream project was Dragon Ball. Do you know Dragon yeah. Ball? Yeah. yeah. The manga? <laughs> that was my dream project, but then I truly believe that I can actually do it. But there's one thing that needs to be done is that how to figure out Goku's hair in live action. <laughs> Once I figure that out, I can do everything else. You know, I have every, uh, the whole movie, you know, trilogy in my head. Okay. Jessica, you can't get go out of order. Mess it up. <laughs> yeah, go, Jessica. <laughs> Well, my dream in this project would be if Eric would let Chloe let her hair down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to wear a ponytail. And, and get on a motorcycle. I'm learning how to ride motorcycles now. He always emails me like, get off the motorcycles. I need you for the next episode. <laughs> so I just want to do something more daring and... You know, just something where I can do like that kind of stunt. That's I mean, we we work with wonderful people. Dom is here, right? Is he here? Who? Domina. He's here. Oh, Damon. 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 Yeah, yeah, I always call him Domina. Yeah. That's my name for him. He's amazing. Woo! Yeah. He is amazing. Woo! You can help you sell a sell a, sell a, a shot, right? Oh, yeah. It's amazing. But yeah, I would just like to do something more more really just sinister, crazy, and that sort of puts me on the edge. I would love that. So. Throwing it back, throwing it back, okay. Throwing it back. Um, I have to say, like, one of my dream things has been to 
this is gonna sound so weird, but to like be with a gun and be kind of badass. <laughs> and I definitely realized that through Eric, like I get to be kind of tough, which is fun for me. So that is definitely a dream. And then I guess another, well, I really want to bring, I have a one woman show that I'm doing and I just want to bring it to New York and have like a full reviewed run of it and hopefully touch and inspire people. So that's my other dream. It's really great too. I've seen it. It's a great show. Thanks, Andrew. We all love what we do. I mean, getting to play characters, getting to dress up and, and you know, have these crazy characters all over time and in the future even. So, you know, my, I guess my dream role is just to play as many different varieties of roles as I can. I'd love to play the cowboy, the military stuff, the futuristic stuff, and it's all out there. I mean, it's it's all out there to be to be tackled. So, um, I just I just love what I do, and I'm glad I'm able to do it. Wow, here, here. Um... I have to say my favorite genre is is all the sci-fi fantasy. Like that's what I geek out over myself personally. Um, but I have to say that I did. I wanted to play. I love the idea of playing the president or the first lady. And perhaps if he dies, I will be the president. <laughs> <laughs> so I just think that's fun. I just think it's. I just think it's fun to be. Plus, like. I like playing characters that are they're not the straight up first lady. She's has issues. Yeah. That that's always more fun as an actor to play a character that on that yeah, that on the outside seemingly is this is is one thing, but really, you know, they're a, a drunken whore <laughs> on Saturdays. <laughs> so it's fun, you want that. And so like that's what's fun about this role is that it's that that has that. But yeah, like my personal favorite of, of getting to do anything in any sci fi fantasy stuff just sends me into apoplexy and glee. <laughs> um well, I kind of have like three dream roles. Like one of them is being a superhero, especially Batman, as you can see my bow tie. And um, like being in like a Jurassic Park movie with like dinosaurs and stuff, or being like in a Star Wars movie because I love Star Wars and stuff. And I want to be like a young Padawan or something, and I turn into a Jedi Knight or a Jedi Master. I'd like to open up to the audience right now, and uh, when you have a question, I am going to have to repeat the question. This is being recorded for a podcast, so anyway, that's why I'm repeating you. Any questions? All right. Woo! All right. Oh, here's one. Yes? Uh, well, being Canadian, I was wondering if you could maybe have a hockey team uh, for the division. Uh, perhaps uh, there could be an episode maybe taking place at an ice rink. Um, I have hockey equipment. All right, so he says being Canadian, he's wondering if there might be room for a uh, ice hockey sort of theme. And he's got equipment if you need it. The question is, do you have the access to rink? Yeah, they got to work on, but, uh, you know, Carl City up Club. in Canada, it's, it's most of the year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's, you can get the rink, there you go. Yeah, I mean, where, that's fantastic. I mean, they don't, I mean, actors don't have to play hockey. You know, but then the fact that it's ice, you know, that's an amazing location. You know, I really never even thought of that. You know, you should so thank you, thank you for pointing that out. Anybody that has a great location. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Sure. Any other questions? Yes, Joe. Uh, great, great technique, great craft. You know, you mentioned about how good it looks. It looks amazing, especially for something that I assume is really low budget. So I'd like to hear about some of your decisions about your DR. How the movie was shot, the camera you used, and you mentioned Eric about how important it was with the sound in the credits. The sound throughout the episodes was amazing too. I'd like to hear a little bit about your choice and how you chose the music. Right. So Joe is just asking about a lot of the different production elements, the music, um, just all the different production. Um, we used a camera for um, camera um, Canon 5D. And uh, the, I, little, there's a little bit of secret there, though. Um, it's not the secret is in the uh, the lens, the prime lens that uh, my DP Ray Huang, who's not here today, he's working in New York right now. But uh, um, he owns a set of 
amazing Zeiss prime lenses that gives you that very vintage feel, very um, kind of softens it out a little bit, but then, you know, the, you can actually, if you look closely on your computer monitor, you can actually see the shape of the, uh, the lens. You can actually see the circle, you know. That's how just it's handcrafted lenses, you know. I think that's what gives a feeling. And then also amazing actors, you know, just being on the screen, um, that actually, you know, elevates the look of the film, you know, that sells the look. And also I pay very uh, great attention to the, uh, the color correction. Um, I want to make sure that um, every scene has different colors, um, um, and also the sound. You know, the sound is, like you say, always the sound is fifty percent of the movie. Um, yeah, sometimes it's even more. Sound. Yeah, I would say it's more than fifty percent. It's, it's like the sound is. Yeah. You can you can get by without picture. But as long as there's a sound, yeah. but then if there's no sound, people are going to walk out. So a lot of people forget that when they make their low budget or you know indie kind of stuff is they the sounds the last thing they think about, and if anything, spend your money on that because when you've got a good mix, it's going to it's it cha it elevates it, you know. And I think that the fact that you picked up on that is great. Uh, if you watch the uh, the No Country for Old Men, there's no music. Mm -hmm. I never noticed it until the end of the movie. I realized, wait a minute, there's no music. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the way. That's the way that you should approach, and also the music too. You should be able to watch the entire movie and just feel the emotion just with the music too. You know, and I always listen to the soundtrack when I'm in my car. I only listen to the soundtrack because what it does is it gives me gives me the visuals. You know, it gives brings back the other uh, memories. And what I do is I you know. I spread out to my imagination from there, and then create my own movie. And that's how a lot of the uh, you know script gets written in my head, and then I just write it down later on. Later on, you know. Um, but thank you for pointing that out, though. You know, we put great effort into every single like sound, music, you know, color correction, the way you shoot. Uh, we have a question here. Yes, sir. My question is for Eric. Do you have the entire story arc? already mapped out in your head, or are you still developing plot lines as you write each episode? Good so, question. So the, the, the question was, uh, do you have the entire arc outlined, or is it in your head? Um, uh, yes and no. Uh, I have written till episode 7. I have outlined for episode 8 and 9. Oh, by the way, this is 10 episode web series. Uh, and then I have the ending for episode 10. I know how it ends. I just need to figure out 7 and 8. I know what happens. I just need to write it down and just kind of, you know, uh, write in detail and make it make sense for the characters. But what happens is, don't tell. Like, no, no, no. Of course I'm not. You know, <laughs> what happens is like episode one. You know, um, the secretary is supposed to be coming out from the van, and we're supposed to be meeting him. But obviously, we didn't shoot it, so I have to change the script in the second one. And for example, in the fourth episode. The conversation they have inside the van and outside the uh, uh, when they get out of the van that actually happens in the very beginning of episode four at the house that they wore, which we shot when we shot episode three. Uh, but then so you have to change things around. I have to change. Yeah. I, I, when I saw the scene, it didn't work because um, there was no emotion. Like it was more like the emotion was wrong and I was wrong. You know, like I saw the I saw the scene. They were fantastic, but then. The, uh, um, the direction was wrong, you know, so I realized it, okay, I can't use this, I mean, I can't use, I have to change the scene, I have to make it more dynamic, you know, so, um, so in that sense, little bits here and there changes, so, yeah, so, yeah. That, but I do think that if, uh, but I do think, if to, to, to elaborate on that, if someone was to come in and say, oh, hey, I, I would love to pick this up as a series, yeah, we could do 200 episodes, you know, <laughs> you know, because I happen to know how this ends, but the great <coughs> thing about it is that it's, it's an ending that there's all, the, there's all these great pieces that could get us there, so um, I'm just stepping in just to say that, that, you know, I think that if it ends up being just 10, it'll be awesome, and it may end up being more than that, and I actually have a feeling it will. And I mean, oh, can I say one more thing about it? And the thing with Eric, too, and his understanding of the series is it goes beyond 
10 episodes, definitely. Like if you, I mean, I had so many questions for him because I'm talking about time travel and consciousness and stuff. And so he will literally talk with me for an hour in answering those questions. So it's not just about knowing the storylines, but knowing, you know, what, yeah, what's, what is the backstory and, and, and what leads up. That's the same thing. What is the backstory? <laughs> yeah. We have another question. Yes, sir. So um, how did you come up with the concept of uh, conscious time travel? And is that the main driver of the story for going forward? So the question is, how did you come up with uh, conscious time travel? And how does that play into the story going forward? Um, I actually, I'm not like, a, I love sci-fi movies, but I'm not a sci-fi writer. And uh, I'm really bad at writing those imaginative things, especially like time travel or, you know, science, whatever. But then when I, you know, in the beginning, when I was, uh, when I decided to write this as a series, um, I was actually looking for something that, you know, uh, it was actually just uh, simple. Uh, the, the son gets kidnapped and the father tries to find him. Um, but then, uh, you know, like he, these days, every, everywhere, you need a high concept, right? So I, I intentionally try to look for a high concept theme. And what's the most easiest thing? What's the most common thing? It's time travel, right? But I don't want to do every, you know, same time travel. So um, what can I do? Or what if just your mind just travels and into your, you know, past body? And you know, I just call it a consciousness time travel. That's how I named it. And this guy changed to conscious time travel. Um, but yeah, that's how it, you know, just kind of began, I guess. And. Uh, and, and, but then I, I actually see t conscious time travel uh, in the last, um, like, the days of future past, yeah. X-Men. Mm -hmm. That was actually yeah, about, was yeah. yeah. Um, one, one of the things I love about the series is, it, in speaking of consciousness and synchronicity and that type of thing, this series seems to be in sync with so many other things that are going on right now, you know? and. That Tom Cruise movie, you know, I, I was thinking about that, and uh, you know, there there's so many, and all of these, uh, you know, series that are on now the blacklist and that kind of thing. There's there's elements of this series that play into all of that. So I think you've, you know, uh, linked up to the synchronicity that's going on now, and it could carry us wherever it carries us. Uh, also, what, what I want to point out that, um, you know, just uh, because I'm not like, you know, sci-fi creative person, um, for example, when you're watching, when you're watching an action film, when you watch gun shooting sequence from the beginning to an end, there's really no meaning of gun shooting sequence action, right? But if there's one, if there's two in the entire movie, it really means a lot, and all that drama that leads up to it, you know, like just like Heat, you know, which is my favorite movie, the gun shooting sequence the, the, in the Heat stands out so much because all this drama backs it up. There's a reason for it, you know? Um, I say this because we say that it's conscious time travel, you know, we, uh, we threw it out there already now, but I'm not bound by this Okay, so we only have to talk about conscious, you know? It's not like that. It's not about conscious time travel. It's about father finding his son. And conscious time travel is just, you know, another storyline that comes into play, you know, later on. So I'm not focusing on the time travel part. I'm focusing on the drama of, you know, father finding a son. Um, that's what I'm focusing on. The simple things. Yeah. Uh, maybe one more question. Any other questions? Yes? So uh, the question was uh, for Eric, the director, um, what inspired him to do this? Uh, was he inspired by Prison Break? Uh, and what sort of themes uh, were you exploring with the story? That's a very good point because in our press release, you know, the division is actually in the vein of 24 and Prison Break. Um, before I wrote, wrote The Division, there were only three TV shows that I watched. 
24 lost prison break. I basically combined them all together. And made them. <laughs> uh, so there's definitely that inspiration. Um, what I love about uh, prison break uh, was the, uh, the the mysterious organization that is so powerful that you don't know where the end is. You know, I love that concept. And then I just throw in the, the, the conscious time travel and the family drama. You know, and I love the uh, the, uh, the, the the speed of 24. You know, the, the action. You know, just uh, you can. Everything happens every second, you know. I just love the fact that that's why I like, intentionally try to move the story very fast, um, uh, almost to the point where audience is like, whoa, 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 wait, what, you know? Uh, but I like it, you know. It's better to be the uh, better to be people rewinding and rewatching it than go, can we fast forward it? You know? <laughs> uh, great. I like that. Yeah. I did want to uh, ask one brief question to everybody up here. I was just curious, what's next for each of you guys? I know that, uh, Ivana, that you have your one-woman show. I know that uh, Andrew just came back from filming a mysterious project. Uh, but anyway, just if you have anything that you'd like to share briefly. The lady at the end. Okay. <laughs> I, I did want to say something real quick that from the actor's perspective of working with Eric Scripps is that, you know, he just allows so much for the nonverbal and as actors we're always told that if you can communicate something nonverbally, that's the better way to go. And I think you see so much exam so many examples of that. So um, I, I, I think that's why what my favorite scene in this is the one between Ivana and um, Andrew when he sees her for the first time. Like, I cry every single time I see that scene. I just, you guys did such an amazing job on that. And this one's eyes are just, they will stab you. Like, they're amazing. Um, but I, I just want to say thank you for that. And an interesting fact is that between episodes, so much time passes. and. We break, it's like our wardrobe, some of it. And so I'm like, can you give us, you know, a heads up? Like, we've we got to fit into this stuff, you know? Like, what earrings am I wearing, you know? And so that, that's how committed everybody is, that we, we keep that wardrobe in our closet. Um, but uh, as, in terms of what's next, another thing that I want to thank Eric for, um, I, I lost my mom last August um, to Alzheimer's, actually. And, um, you know, he waited as well for me and um, I was with her living in the, in the facility so it was a wonderful journey and um, I'm trying to write her story now so it would be my second book and I'd love to make it into a script if I could because it's it's so amazing the journey that we took in, in the terminal facility so that is my dream or to put it on stage and we have so many amazing photos um, I think it would be a, a labor of love but so much of my passion would be in that and I would be so honored to honor my mom that way so I'm hoping for that. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, you do have something. Your audition. Yes, you do. Um, uh, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> what are you having this summer? Um, we might go on a Disney cruise. Oh, yeah. yeah. some time to, to fit back into that <laughs> so, what Jessica said. Um, I'm going to do a little series called Mac and Abby that I'm very excited about and um, a romantic comedy called Getting the Kinks Out. Um, and I don't know, just some episodics here and there to pay the bills. And But then hoping that Eric speeds up the next episode. That's, that's <laughs> kind of like, well, I'm all in. I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I've cut my hair. And so the next scene, the, uh, Helen comes in, she's going to have different hair and all that. That's good. I'm in it. That's, we'll just it'll be great. <laughs> um, I'm excited about my first play uh, being read publicly at the Road Theater. It's uh, a short called Seventh Heaven, and it's going to be read uh, on July 28th at their play reading series. And the Road Theater is just a fantastic place to see plays and to see readings, so uh, look for that coming up. And, you know, I'm just out there auditioning, you know, wait, waiting for the callbacks, waiting for the, wait, waiting for the lightning to strike <laughs> the next time. Um, and that's it for me. 
Um, yeah, I make sure to have a different haircut and or hair color every time I see Eric. <laughs> um, I, so, yeah, like Tripp said, I have my one-person show, which is about, I'm Canadian, and it's about my immigration journey. Nice. Uh, and it's a comedy, and so I'm extending it now. I did an hour of it at Just for Last Festival, Comedy Festival in Montreal, and it got picked up, so now I'm doing an hour and a half, and I'm also pitching it around town as a pilot, and I'm working on my first feature. And I also teach writing classes. I have a little bit of an obsession with writers, so I've been working with writers a lot, and that's been making me really happy. Well, my next is probably um, The Division Episode 5. Yeah. <laughs> I actually thought of something I'm going to do this summer. Um, I'm probably going to hang out with my friends, Ava, Bella, and Emily over there. Um, yeah. Hi, my name is Just a, just a brief one to ask, uh, where can everybody check out The Division? Everyone can check out The Division at whatisthedivision.com website. Whatisthedivision.com, yeah. Um, also, you can also find us on Hulu and uh, our YouTube. Uh, we're trying to grow our presence. We launched in, on YouTube very late in the game, so we are trying to still trying to um, gain, um, you know, presence on YouTube, like, many many subscribers and many many likes and you know things like that so if you you know if you could, can just go home and uh, you know just do so then that'll be pretty awesome uh, and, and the fourth episode comes out Monday right oh yes episode yeah. four will you know, go online on Monday uh, at 9 a.m. and uh, I uh, wanted to actually uh, before I forget yeah. Um, I wanted to have my entire cast, uh, yes. uh, crew, ca uh, cast, anybody in the audience, uh, could you please stand up before I forget. Could you please stand up if you worked on it in any capacity. The hockey uh, question came up earlier with the great location of the ice skating rink, and I think one of the challenges with lower budget films and, and lower budgets is finding incredible locations. So if any of you out there have incredible access to Dodger Stadium, uh, any, you know, uh, downtown libraries, any, any, any site that you think would be really an amazing location, then, then let, uh, let Eric know. So, sure. so that you know, we can maybe work around that. Sounds great, mm -hmm. Andrew. What's, what's up for you? Yeah. Oh no, what's I'm going on? Uh, summer. You can't summer talk. Talk. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no I, I just same old, just you know, in the grind. I'm officially, you know, well, I can do it on Tuesday, but um, no, can't I'm talk just, about. No, no, no. I, 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 I got got a couple. Of, <laughs> I got a couple of gigs. I did something recently that was very cool. Um, but I can't, uh, you'll all know about it at the end of, uh, uh, um, at the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, that was a really good fart sound out of my mouth right now. <laughs> that was a good one. That really sounded like a definitive fart. It sounded like it came down in my back. Yeah, what about Star Wars? Oh, Wars Star Wars the Musical, George Shaw is amazing. That's out right now. If you haven't seen it, it's hysterical. Just look up Star Wars a Musical. Um, we are starting to get some decent, decent viewers there on uh, on YouTube, which is basically George wrote um, basically Star Wars episode. I always want to say episode one because yeah, we all know the Phantom Menace is a race, a race, a race. Um, but he basically took that and he wrote it like um, if it was done as a Disney musical. So, like, all of the scenes are done from with Disney songs and the characters singing it. So, you know, like, <laughs> when you kneel before us, and stuff like that. So, if you haven't seen it, it's like six, six, four, five, five, six minutes. It's, it's great. really great. They took, again, a year and a half to make that. Um, the Division, uh, um, 
I just did a really goofy um, thing for this new Nick show that'll be out, I think, in August. Um, um, that's it. Yeah, you know, just 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 back in the game, and I've been working on a a, a, a TV series and another thing um, that I've been developing for about a year. Uh, that uh, it's it's it, there's some bites, but uh, there's nothing to an announce yet on that. But um, I'm just 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 driving forward every day. I guess I'm not giving up yet. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I suppose we'll wrap it up then. I uh, just wanted to thank the entire audience for attending. Thank you, Alex.